of these brothers. First, Dr. Watson, I had the privilege of being a part of the search committee for the Superintendent of the Spring Independent School District, and throughout that process, uh, all the information was coming in, different candidates, and then I was, I got a phone call about like 11 p.m. one night. Sister Durant called me all excited. She said, Pastor, we, we, we picked our person. You're going to love him. He's intelligent. He's articulate. He's bright. He's like super dynamic. And I had to check my ego. I'm like, I thought I was your favorite dude. <laughs> she said, no. Pastor she said, Pastor, you're going to love him. Love him. He's like the next Barack Obama. And then once I had the privilege of sitting down and breaking bread with him, after breaking bread with him one on one, I called him back and said, Sister Rand, you're right. This brother is super. And the favor of God is on his life. And so I applaud you, my brother, for being one of God's leading men. Bless you. And then, I, my first time meeting you in person. Bless you. But listen, this is how, again, late one night, my natural mother, I came on her birth canal. And she says, well, I know she said, you know, she, she said, Pastor, instead of son. She said, Pastor, you got to meet this brother. He's smart. He's bright. He's super. And then she had an extra caveat. She said, he's the most intelligent black man I've ever met in my life. I said, well, I'm, I'm your boy. <laughs> she, she said, when black people come, you got to get him before the church. I said, yes, ma'am. <laughs> so I honor you. And all God is doing in your life. Looking forward to a continued relationship. God bless you. You can be seated. We're gonna can we move this real quickly? Whenever there's a major murder or a major issue in the community, the news people show up for bad news. But so I want us to flood our social media timelines that two young brothers, thank you, David, two young, strong brothers are leading decision makers in the future and present direction of our communities and children. Give God one more shout of praise. The real black pastor is right here. Real today, 21st century heroes. So we're gonna open up our interview process like this. Y'all, we got some feedback up here, thank you. I'm gonna start with Dr. Watson, then we'll ask the same question. That's my favorite. My favorite quote, and I want you to fill in the blank. The dream of a dreamer only comes true if the dreamer blanks it all the way through. How would you fill in that? I would say, I would say if a dreamer has a vision, and if that vision is planted in a promise, and if that vision is planted in a promise from God, you see that I have an Isaiah 58 and 11 promise that what's going to happen in Spring ISD is only going to be done through bottom up. That means the community working together. That means the community working together to understand what God's trying to do in this place. For us to really make sure that we're focused in keeping the main thing the main thing. You see, the vehicle is education. That's the vehicle that we're using to drive in the promise. Because it's all about kingdom, break, kingdom building. And when we work together to build the kingdom, there's no big eyes and there's no little eyes. It's all of us locking arms, working together. It's all putting away who we say we are, putting away our titles to make sure that our kids have what we need. Because it's not about me being a superintendent. It's not about me getting hired. It's about me carrying out a promise. A promise that was over Spring ISD way before I got there. But it's a promise that I've been given an opportunity to carry. Wow, great answer. The same question. The dream of a dreamer only comes true if the dreamer blanks it all the way through. How would you feel in that blank? First of all, thank you for having me. I, I'm here in humility, so I certainly appreciate the, the invitation. Uh, for me, as the word says, faith without works is dead. And so we gotta work the dream. And so it's one thing to, to believe have faith, but now it's time to work. As part of Sheldon ISD, we're working. Uh, it's about the community, it's about those students, it's about the next generation. And so, we're not only set out a vision, I mean, now we have to work that vision. We have to go every single day. Our motto in our district is every child every day. And so we come every single day focused on children, because we can get better every day. Until we reach 100% of them, we miss the mark somewhere. So every day when we return the next day, we come prepared to grow and continue that work moving forward. So in my 
uh, humble opinion, it's about the work. It's about moving the dream far, not just dreaming it, but working that thing to make it come to reality. Amen. I don't know if you've noticed, but every, every person that we've honored, Grace for Greatness, has included God as the foundation of what they're doing. See, at some point in time, we can't become so awoke that we're sleeping on God. All right. Don't let this society and this culture cancel the God factor in your life if you desire to be great. Now, Dr. Davis, my next question, I'll, I'll piggyback right back to you, then we'll jump back to Dr. Watson. The Bible, since you're familiar with the Bible, you can understand this. The Bible says, man is born but a few days but full of trouble. That means that as you climb up in your career, you'll be faced with obstacles. The problem with many people, they start out dreaming big dreams, but they never learn how to overcome the obstacles of life. What advice would you give this generation on how to handle adversity and obstacles? In other words, when the devil shows up, how do you overcome those factors? Great, great, great question. And absolutely, to whom much is given, much is required. And so I, I, I understand that wholeheartedly. And uh, as part of leadership, uh, it's certainly, uh, we certainly have uh, overcome and continue to overcome obstacles in Sheldon ISD. But it's for, for me, for me personally, it's about the word of God who sustains me. Uh, I can tell you, brother, I, I would have run out <laughs> and left a long time ago. <laughs> it's a very daunting task, uh, what we're faced with in public education. And so for me, it's a daily, I pick up my cross daily. And I ask God to provide me for my daily bread for that day and enough grace for that day. And so it's about continuing to feed my soul, my spirit, so that I'm prepared and put on the whole armor of God so I'm prepared uh, for whatever's coming my way. Uh, because it's not a matter of if or when uh, that some obstacle, some adversity is coming our way. And so that's how I uh, continue to daily uh, to overcome. Thank you so much. Dr. Watson, the same, the same question. Uh, your task was so, so super. You, you got this superposition. You was faced with super obstacles at the very beginning, but you handled it gracefully. How were you able to, as the former uh, First Lady Michelle Obama say, stay high when they went low? So how are you able to deal with adversity and obstacles and keep the smile and composure on your face? Well, I would definitely say, it, you know, it goes back to um, the roots. You had an opportunity a few years ago to help celebrate my mother's homegoing. And I think a lot of things that we take for granted is the power of the past generations. You know, so often I talk to my own four kids who are sitting up there who think we're so old fashioned and we just don't know. Our kids don't understand the power of experience and the power of wisdom. And sometimes because as adults we get so busy or we get so frustrated or we get tired, we forget that they need us to be able to speak life back into them. And so sometimes we need to go back and not let just the young generation teach the young generation, but we need to make sure that the older generations who's been through some stuff go back and share the wisdom. And we've got to work with our kids to make sure they sit back and listen. Because there's a lot of kids in spring or much just like my own four kids that are over there. And I know they're going to get mad at me when I say this, but sometimes they don't want to listen. But sometimes we need to sit them down and do just like my mother did to me and make us listen. And understand that when these trials come, the word says that God will never leave you or forsake you. He didn't say it was going to be easy. But when the going gets tough, you got to pull back on the word and say, God, you said you'd never leave me or forsake me, and you didn't. That gives me the power to stand and to be, to be firmly rooted in the ground. Amen. Amen. I'm going to pick back again. I can forward this next question. With your wisdom and experience, that you have in 2018. But go back in a time capsule to Rodney in the ninth grade, and you were able to speak to a young ninth grade Rodney and give him advice based on what you've seen and experienced thus far. What would be your advice to this generation's high school kid, junior high school kid, on how to get to a position where you are? And let me say, when I say position, y'all think you really realize what we have. These are two brothers. All right. Who run the show? Many of us talk about being a boss. These are bosses. So, what would you tell a ninth grade like? I would say, don't let people define 
what God already has inside of you. Don't try to be what you're not. Understand what God is going to call you to do and walk in that. Even if that means that you have to be alone and feel like you're walking by yourself. Just keep focus. Thank you so much. I'm David, same question. Go back to the ninth grade. You're walking down the hallway of your high school and you had a chance to speak to yourself based on your level of success, experience, and knowledge in 2018. What would you tell a young brother in the ninth grade? Sir, great question. Wow, you can interchange uh, many words. I would tell you persistence. Um, uh, I look at this generation now and I was reflecting on what Dr. Watson was saying. It's, it's so many times they give up too soon. Failure's gonna come. You know, they go, absolutely, you, there's, gonna, there's a certain level of intellect and so on and so forth that, that equates to success, and I get that. But I would tell you, in my humble opinion, it's more so important to have stick to it and some persistence and not, not give in. Because you're going to cross some, some tough times. And so what I see in, uh, oftentimes, our students give up, they quit, uh, whether it's through a class or through, through trials and tribulations. And so uh, if I can speak to any youth today, that still got just hang in there. Just hang in there. If you just persist and move forward, the tough times will come. But, but, uh, but, but just hang in there, persistence. Thank you so much. That's just that rank. We're greatly impressed by these two young, young kings and leaders. Our final question or final comments, Dr. Watson, when you give a final statement, how would you like to conclude this interview, just share from your own personal experience, whatever you desire to share, and then we can do the same thing in conclusion. I just want to leave with you all that you know we say this statement all all the time that it takes a village but it takes the church and it takes the church to partner with school districts you know we have healthy comp um, competition between districts around us and it's so easy to sit back and judge what's happening and what's not happening but I've said this statement ever since I've come to spring that our district is only as good as the community. And our community is only as good as the district, which means that's a reciprocal process that goes back and forth that we depend and need on, we need each other. And when we say that it takes a village, it takes more than people coming to football games. It takes more than coming to athletic events. It takes more than sitting on the side saying what you think. We need you all to help us. We need you all to pray with us. We need you all to fast for us. We need you all to help parent your kids at home and help us support them at school. Because if you look at what's happening in the media, they're calling for schools to do things that we weren't even created to do. But it's one thing that we know that we understand the burden, we understand the challenge, and we take that challenge. But we need your support, we need your prayers, and we need you all to rally with us to help us educate your kids. And more importantly, we need you all to step up with us to fight the violence that's happening in our community. Because all of these things are taking away for what God has planned for our youth. And if we can work together as a unified community to fight all of those entities that are trying to take our kids away from what we know that God has ordained them to be, if we can do that collectively, then we will save our community. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. So well said. David, your final comments. Wow, wow. Uh, I wish I had gone first. That's <laughs> <laughs> that hard to follow. But, uh, but I'll tell you, I'll, I'll leave you with, uh, just keep it as simple for me, just us as a community, uh, as a people, getting back to the basics. Uh, I've reflected on, on uh, my life and my, gran my grandparents had a lot to do with my upbringing and my core values. And, and in my humble opinion, of the, in my, I feel like we've gotten away from some of that. And, and so going back, making sure I was, our children truly get back to the basics of, of understanding who they are and, and where they come from. And so much that they don't know about the history and, 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 you know, and the, the, the price paid. Uh, for them to be here, for Dr. Watson and myself to be here on the stage, but the debt that was paid, and so I really want our students to really, so when I get to start throwing myself a pity party and have those tough days, I revert back to how dare I 
and consider well my ancestors went through. Come on now, I can get up and get back in the fight and continue on. And so let's get back to the basics, making sure our students truly understand from what from whence they've come. And so I would leave you with that. Thank you so much. Before we conclude, I'm just a little different than we've done in the past. Can I get the, the all, please? Holy God. I've had the privilege of laying my hands on the foreheads of leading political candidates from the White House to all across the country. But I want to do something today. Because I believe that you've both been graced with greatness. And God has not even scratched the surface of the impact you two guys get ready to make on our community. I'm not going to lay my hands on your forehead. I'm going to lay my hands on your feet and pray that everywhere you step. All right. My brother, if you would stand with me, please. And do the whole hands. Because that's unity and that's power in unity. The devil wants to divide and conquer black forces. We don't need a movie to let us know how strong we are together. Your presence lets us see how strong we are together. In the name of Jesus. God the Father, creator of all universe. When you created mankind, you said we were created in your image. You called us another speaking spirit. And we decree and declare now every promise, every prophetic voice has been spoken over these two leaders to be manifested. We decree and declare they will change generations. We decree and declare they will change communities. Father, we decree and declare the next step shall be the greatest step and the next step shall be the greatest step and they shall go forward and not backwards father we pray no scandal no shame shall ever become upon that name but these were two men that will walk in honor walk in integrity and a generation of black and brown depressed and underserved people will see that when i serve the lord there's nothing i cannot do so father we anoint their feet right now we anoint the tops of their head with supernatural wisdom let their hearts always be for you and the people, Father. In 